Nearly four years ago, an industrial building in Bangladesh collapsed, killing more than 1,100 people, highlighting the dangers faced by workers in the textile industry there. What's much less known are the conditions in the leather industry in Bangladesh, where workers are exposed to toxic chemicals and where the waste has created one of the world's dirtiest manufacturing sites. Setting foot in the Hazaribagh neighborhood is an assault on the senses. The scene is seemingly post-apocalyptic. The stench overwhelming and almost vomit-inducing. A combination of garbage, human waste, rotting animal hides, and toxic chemicals. The source of those hides and chemicals are tanneries like these, hundreds of them packed into two square miles. The facilities are often dark and suffocating. Workers rarely wear protective gear, and it doesn't take long to find children toiling away in dangerous conditions. It's very, very cool, but it's nothing in comparison to what the coyotes go through in Canada Goose. Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel here. It's me here, Comrade Lavender here, and today I'm back on another anti-capitalist true crime YouTube video deep dive topic. Today I want to do the pure evil files of the fashion in fashion, like when it comes to animals, you know, birds being used in fashion, and the leather trade industry, you know, like cow leather and things like that. Deep dive, capitalism, true crime, animal cruelty, biodiversity loss, pollution, etc. Disclaimer. Before we get started, I'm only talking about modern day feathers when it comes to birds and fashion, not the past history. I already talked about the past in other fashion videos, and I'm also not going to be talking about the crocodile skin, you know, fashion industry trade i already talked about that as well so before we get started all my youtube videos that are related to this topic will be on the screen right now if you'd like to check them out so let's get started into this youtube video topic the fashion industry's exploitation of wild birds for their feathers is thousands of years old and persists today wild birds both captured from their natural habitat and confined in factory farm light conditions are killed and plucked for their feather trims. Increasingly, feathers are being used as an alternative to fur. Unfortunately, this move from fur to feathers is far beyond, is far from cruelty-free, resulting in significant capitalism misery for ostriches, peacocks, pheasants, and other birds used in fashion. Canadian Canada Goose winter jackets sold at high-end stores like those found at Nordstrom have been the target of PETA protests due to Canada's Canada Goose Company's inhumane animal practices. Speaking out against inhumane animal treatment, the brand Canada Goose, which makes expensive down winter jackets and winter gear, is a status symbol for many. The retail cost, however, is not only high price paid despite the love they get from some customers there are also other people who have been disgusted by this company and their name is downed in controversial opinions and actions these down jackets cost upwards of nine hundred dollars and are sold at high-end stores such as bloomingdale's and nordstrom because they are expensive some view canada goose as a symbol of wealth and status Many celebrities wear these expensive jackets, including the New England Patriots quarterbacker Tom Brady and the Predator rapper Drake. Because celebrities wear these jackets, many people strive to resemble those famous celebrity figures by wearing these pricey coats. However, there have been countless animal activists and PETA and animal advocates speaking out against these jackets due to the cruelty that goes on behind the scenes and making this luxury winter gear jackets. Multiple models of jackets are made wild coyote fur, which is used in part of the hood. 
Coyotes are put into neck, head, leg, and body traps and can spend days there before suffering, before they are unalived when trapped. The animal is rendered defenseless and has no hope of surviving. They often starve to death, are eaten by other animals, get frostbite, go into shock, experience severe blood loss, or become dehydrated. Oftentimes, these distressed animals will attempt to chew off their own leg off, desperate to escape this cruel trap. After they have been unalived, trappers skin them and immediately dispose of their bodies. One main reason people associate this brand with cruelty is that after the fur is collected, the bodies of innocent coyotes are simply discarded without any use. According to PETA, as the name implies, Canada geese are also seriously abused in the process of making these jackets. Their body is placed in scorching hot water to be plucked of their feathers. Consumers are often ignorant about the cruelty towards animals that goes on in this industry and in the making of high fashion, high luxury fashion. Although many purchase downfill for warm gear, there are countless other options for warmth to be considered instead of hurtful brands. The feather trade is not only unethical, but it's also so unsustainable. In one of the leading ostrich feather production countries, South Africa, land degradation, soil degradation, water pollution, and clearing for ostrich feedlots are recognized as serious environmental problems. And the industry is a major contributor to the climate change crisis. The use of feathers as decoration in fashion dates back 10,000s of years. Throughout history, wild birds have been become in, severely exploited, endangered, and extinct for the sake of fashion. And this serious problem still per persists to this very day, currently, in modern-day society, often in a high-industrialized setting. The capless pig gluttony Italian fashion houses of Gucci, Prada, and Valentino are some of the clear examples of each brand continues to incorporate feathers into their high fashion collections. In recent years, Gucci has increasingly trimmed coats and dresses with ostrich feathers. The use of wild birds in their feathers is not exclusive to high-end and luxury fashion, with fast fashion retailers also using them, including brands such as Zara, H&M, and Mango. When presented with an image of a dress which featured ostrich feather trim sleeves, the majority of customers and people across the United Kingdom and Australia could not identify this trim correctly. In fact, the vast majority mistook ostrich feathers for totally animal-free materials. Ostrich feathers are the most commonly used of all wild bird feathers in the fashion industry, with an estimate of over 1 million birds being killed and unalived each year. While ostrich feathers were once largely reserved for use in costumes, for burlesque dancers, carnival dancers, jazz club singers, and the heads of wealthy women, today many ostrich feathers are mainstream in fashion. When ostriches are not given adequate space to roam naturally, it causes them severe distress mentally. These mighty birds have been documented in South African feedlots, factory farming conditions, repeatedly biting the air, chewing at wire fences, and displaying other common signs of psychological distress and capitalism misery. Breeding birds are often not sent to slaughterhouses, but are usually unalived and cold on-site location when they are no longer deemed profitable. The peacock feather trade is shrouded in secrecy, but with very minimal information available about it. The industry's lack of transparency was perhaps most notable in 2013 when Burberry sold a 22,000 pound coat made from what were claimed as 100% farmed golden peacock feathers from India. Even while the international trade of peacock feathers is heavily controlled and monitored due to poaching and the association populations are in decline, Following the investigation, it was revealed that the feathers were actually from birds in a facility in China, exported to New York before being sent to India for sewing. In China, where there is similar lack of transparency to the peacock trade, two journalistic photo series in 2017 and 2020 give a glimpse into the treatment of birds and wrapped and taped up into plastic bags and close all their necks and heads during transport to protect the financial value of their tail feathers. The factory farming pheasants for feathers is tied not only to the feather and meat industries, but also to further recreational hunting where wealthy capitalist pigs pay for these birds to be released on their property so they can shoot them and hunt them for tr trophy hunting sport. Zoonic diseases, 
those which can be transmitted from other animals to humans are a risk associated with rearing wildlife for profit, including the fur industry. Aviation influenzaemia, or bird flu, is a major focus point worldwide. It is a highly contagious disease with potential zoonic risk and huge economic implications. Ostriches infected with the disease can suffer anorexia, depression, and central nervous system impacts, with previous outbreaks having to lead to mask and culling of entire ostrich flocks and affected farms. South African production systems move birds between a number of farms during breeding, chick, and adult rearing, with an aim to maximize productivity and economic efficiency. This system has been known and shown to increase vulnerability to disease outbreaks. Now on to the leather trade and tannery industries when it comes to tanning animal skins. Leather is not a natural or sustainable byproduct. It's a profitable material produced at the expense of animals and the planet, Earth herself. There's no getting around it. Plastic is one of the most pressing environmental issues of our time. While the leather industry has used its concern around plastic and microplastics to promote itself as a sustainable green solution, leather production contributes heavily and massively to our climate change crisis and the capitalism caused biodiversity crisis as well and it's not even coated in and it's even coated in plastic sometimes too according to the united nations food and agricultural organization 16.5 percent of all greenhouse gas emissions are linked to animal agriculture and animal agriculture is one of the worst deforest deforestation things on this earth of that 62 of the 62 percent of direct emissions are tied to cattle rearing and ranching even when leather is a vegetable tanned, often claimed by the industry to be more responsible pro process, there's no significant difference in the carbon water energy footprint and does not biodegrade. But there's good news too. Many innovative non-animal leather options are now utilized for clothing and accessories. And not just this, but, but the crocodile, you know, leather trade is actually more polluting than the actual like cow leather trade not only has leather contributed to the climate change crisis through greenhouse gas emissions but it's also inherently efficient to produce requiring enormous amounts of cleared land resulting in massive deforestation as a result leather production exacerbates global biodiversity destruction and concerns o often overlooked by sustainability assessments biodiversity and wildlife are at risk on land ut utilized for leather production, and there is an increased chance of desertification and land degradation and soil degradation tied to cattle ranching in those areas too. For example, leather boots, a land amount equal to nearly one and a half football fields, needs to be cleared for cattle ranching. To produce a standard cow skin leather tote bag, 17,000 liters of water is required, which equals the amount of water a human is recommended to drink each day for over 23 years. And th the calculations, this amount is further increased at the slaughterhouse level, with half the world's population at risk of facing water scarcity as early as 2025. Leather is not a sustainable Leather production not only requires a significant amount of water, but also pollutes natural waterways, polluted water dumped of tanneries and slaughterhouses, and which runs off farms and feedlots can lead to environmental pollution and catastrophe. At the farm level, manure runoff can create dead zones within waterways where aquatic life is unable to survive wiping aquatic life out. Slaughterhouses often forget Forgotten parts of the leather supply chain regularly dump biohazard waste into waterways. Meanwhile, as many as 300 to 400 million tons of heavy metals, solvents, toxic sludge, and other waste are also dumped into bodies of water every year from tanneries. To avoid environmental penalties for these actions, wealthier countries often outsource their production to the global south and use the global south as a giant dumpster where tanneries are also responsible for land and air pollution that harms plant and animal life 
up to 170 chemicals are used in the tannering process, including formaldehyde and arsenic, which are known human carcinogens. With an increasing demand for sustainability within the fashion industry, leather is often promoted as a natural choice, but animal skins are tanned into leather for the specific purpose of rendering them inorganic and no longer natural, able to be last longer due to heavy chemical use. Meanwhile, the selective breeding and domestication of 1.4 billion animals on largely cleared native land certainly is not of the benefit to the natural environment or Mother Earth. Millions of dollars worth of misinformation is regularly spread by groups such as Leather Naturally, Leather UK, and Leather and Hyde Council of America. They continue to spread claims that leather is renewable, green, and biodegradable a worthless byproduct and capable of reducing plastic fibers, despite opposing evidence with the goal of increasing leather product sales. Meanwhile, the leather industry trade also avoids addressing the reality that their valuable coal product is often coated with plastic, even legally without labeling, and that after tanning is no longer effectively biodegradable. Not only this, but tanneries and the leather industry has a child labor problem. You know, because child labor is normal underneath the system that is capitalism. Children as young as 8 years old who are child laborers working in the tanneries of Bangladesh, India, producing leather that is demanded across Europe and the United States, are exposed to toxic chemical cocktails that are likely to shorten their lives. According to a new report, approximately 90% of those who live and work in the overcrowded urban slums where hazardous chemicals are discharged into the air, streets, the river, and the environment are unalived before they reach the age of 50. According to the World Health Organization, the hazards of the 250 or so tanneries, which are 30 to 35 years old and discharge 6,000 cubic meters of toxic waste and 10 tons of solid waste every single day, are best known despite several court orders to close down more than 150 tanneries in the districts continue to operate while dumping 21,000 cubic feet of untreated wastewater daily into one of the world's most crowded cities. And each day, an estimated 40 million liters of untreated wastewater flows through major tanning country, India, into the Gallus River, which people drink from and bathe in. These chemicals not only impact the workers who work in the tannery industry, but also surrounding local communities in India. Environmental racism also is a major thing. Tanneries appear on the Environmental Protection Agency's Superfund list more than any other type of business. It's so toxic that 95% of U.S. tanneries now operate overseas in the Global South to avoid environmental oversight penalties and fines. The land under tannery sites cannot be used for farming, development, or often even be sold. The choice is to move tanneries from west to countries filled with brown people is fueled by racism. The implication of this choice is that environmental impacts and pollution suffered as a result of tanneries are acceptable for brown people, but not white people. And it's not just this. Fast fashion you know, also is dumped in the global south, and the pollution is leaking out there too. Tannery workers suffer high cancer rates due to exposure to tanning chemicals, which are also known carcinogens once again.